Nasan, konnichiwa. Samurai Engineer Desk. In this video, we'll continue the discussion on the subject railway engineering. It is an important uh, subject under transportation engineering because of its uh, use and utility to most of the movement of people and goods. And uh, we discussed a lot of principle during the first video, and now we will uh, give you the fundamental principle of railway transport, and that is efficiency. What are the implications for economics, energy, and environment, or why rail transport is more important than ever? As there are increasing number of people, population, development uh, all over the uh, community, there is an increasing importance given to railway transportation. In uh, 20th century, was about convenience. Okay? The 21st must consider efficiency as well because uh, we are dealing more and more of what mega cities, there are mega cities that um, move not only people and goods conveniently, but in high density, in high density. Mega cities are called mega cities because of very high density of requirement alongside the increased number of population. Then the abundant energy, land, natural resources, and labor. Now, dimin diminishing resources because of uh, those requirements. In a very small place, we need so much energy, energy for everything, particularly, mostly, electric energy, okay? Energy, air quality, water, land in a very small area. So the density of uh, city centers are looking, looking uh, exponentially increasing. Congestion because of this, need more efficient use of transportation infrastructure. Stronger global competition, and uh, we only have enough oil for uh, 144 years. Okay, for example, in this uh, in this uh, diagram, we have what United States and Alaska, seven billion barrels. Mexico, four and a half billion barrels. Canada, one billion barrels. South America, nine and one port billion barrels. Eastern Hemisphere, 21 and a half and one port billion barrels. Take a look, Eastern Hemisphere. So East, so that includes the Middle East and uh, Asia, okay? So Eastern Hemisphere. And uh, probable undiscovered 20 billion barrels. Okay, so probable and discovered maybe mostly in the Pacific, okay, mostly underwater. Uh, and uh, that's why they are uh, what searching for it every time and uh, trying to corner a huge uh, area, whether it is by land or uh, by, air, uh, by water. The problem really is to control an area that has a potential uh, oil. Uh, we have uh, the uh, friction currently in the West uh, Philippine Sea or in the last about what, nine, about nine countries uh, jacking for uh, control and uh, the dominant controlling countries uh, now China, which wants to expand its uh, territorial control, wherein it is more 
it already got about one fourth of the Earth's surface. <laughs> okay, so because of necessity, why the population requires a lot of that energy, air quality, water, land. Okay, they are having what how many billion people? About one fourth of the Earth are Chinese, and they are spreading over <laughs> In other countries, uh, just lately we have what uh, Chinese New Year that are, uh, that is uh, what Chinese New Year is uh, celebrated around the globe right now. So the influence and political uh, clout over China cannot be ignored, particularly by the United States. That's why there is a friction. Also with the United States is the group of European countries. Okay. At present rate of oil consumption, consumption, the world's oil resources could supply the United States market for 144 years. Okay. At a present rate of oil consumption. But throughout the year, there is what? An exponential requirement for this type of energy, okay? That's why they are developing other uh, equipments that would not be dependent on oil, for example, uh, electric. However, uh, electric production is also somewhat dependent uh, largely on oil. So it's a uh, very hard uh, thing to do how uh, they would be able to get through it because uh, the only non-oil energy that could be an answer to this uh, growing concern is the uh, nuclear energy. However, there is a, uh, again, the, the trend on uh, on little by little gradually going away from going out of the use of nuclear energy okay for example germany gradually going away from uh, the use of nuclear energy and uh, some other countries like i think japan is uh, also one country if japan does that uh, it is a very big problem because it is too much dependent on nuclear energy so it's a very big problem for the world and uh, they will uh, go back to other forms of energy like uh, coal and oil. And because of that, uh, we are also uh, having seen the development of uh, renewable energy. So because of this, uh, what concerns the rail transport is uh, this one. The world's deposits of oil are over but uh, 65 billion barrels. Okay? Are over 65 billion barrels. As you can see in our what? So about three miles. No? About three miles and one mile diameter. One mile diameter, three miles high, that is the world's amount of deposit, okay? 65 billion. Okay? So that involves probable undiscovered duty. Uh, you can look at 21, one port billion barrels in Eastern Hemisphere, that is the East. East. Uh, our country is part of the East, but uh, we don't have any. <laughs> contribution for this a paper our contribution for oil production is negligible ever but uh, 1920 consumption uh, 437 million barrels that is uh, on the diagram they can look on the diagram the difference okay and uh, as you can see, the high tower, towering Walworth building 
is uh, about what 750 feet <laughs> 750 feet about uh, 200 more than 200 uh, meters high remember that uh, more than 200 meters high okay so it is about what 75 by story building so and uh, it will not stand against the consumption of oil okay, around the world for different purposes. So it's huge, it's huge. Uh, there's only about 144 years, including the 20 billion, which is what? It's a big chunk, a big percentage. If I will compute 20 billion barrels, for a total of on a total of what uh, 65 okay 20 divided by uh, 65 that is so much okay so that is about how much that is about 30 percent that is about 30 percent imagine that imagine that uh, you have about 30 percent that is uh, un undiscovered okay so improved uh, carburation however has already brought about a reduction in the oil demands per car so that the present consumption rate may decrease despite gains in automobile registration. But I don't think so. Uh, <coughs> population increased faster than, <laughs> than uh, carburation <laughs> would decrease the uh, demand. Okay? Population's rate of increase is higher than carburation efficiency improvement okay so it's not the case i don't think so in uh, addition shale oil and uh, better refining processes promise abundant fuel supplies for the future figures in the chart here with are from the u.s geological surveys comparison between the tanks is by cubic measure so it is a pretty, pretty useful uh, data from USGS and uh, one of the influencing factor in decision making why we have to use some uh, transport uh, medium. Okay? For example, uh, there are what light rays. Okay, that uses electric rather than but rather than uh, fuel. Okay, so let's uh, take a look. What there? We have energy efficiency drop. Okay, versus uh, rail. We can if we can con con compare. How far can each uh, mode of transport uh, a given amount of pride for a given amount of energy? Comparison, apple to apple, uh, as the popular saying goes. Especially how far can we transport one ton of pride with one gallon of uh, diesel fuel? Okay, just to make the comparison visual. Okay, for rail, Rail is over uh, three times more efficient than truck. Truck. Okay. It will uh, be able to move one ton of load or freight with one gallon of diesel fuel about what? Freight revenue ton miles per gallon more than three times rail is uh, more efficient so this is from AR and uh, FRA data okay 
as you can see the gray the gray the gray portion is more than three times right so more than three times less than four times okay so more efficient as you can see this is about what uh, almost less than 500 is uh, just over 100 so the uh, difference is more than three more than three times the difference okay and this is for rail and so to transport this uh, amount of freight ah uh, the uh, rail would uh, be more what so as the load increase the rail is more uh, powerful more efficient and uh, meaning to say necessary so it is uh, necessary more and more to have a rail transport uh, system increase the uh, public interest in rail uh, we are now uh, using railway system more and more okay, even our country even personally myself is uh, but I have been using uh, rail transportation more and more. Uh, uh, currently, compared to about uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So there is a what? <laughs> there is a substantial acceptance of the public for it because of what? In the mega cities, we are always compounded with what? Daily traffic. And sometimes, we can sacrifice convenience for uh, what faster movement traffic means uh, heavy traffic okay heavy traffic uh, daily is uh, too much to bear okay so that's why uh, we always we always uh, make it a point that uh, we consider rail uh, transport to be one of the important means of movement increased awareness of rail as a solution to congestion okay? pollution and fuel inefficiency increased motivation yeah pollution meaning uh, now uh, railways uh, improving from what coal to fuel and to electric so less and less uh, railway system with uh, what the uh, engines we have now motors uh very current motors okay for example and uh, high voltage dc power supply so increased motivation to public uh, for uh, increased motivation to invest the uh, public money and rail infrastructure so there are uh, several examples of that in the uh, united states like uh, heartland create green power locomotives and uh, i81 these are the companies uh, dealing into a railway system heartland for example this is the uh, map of the operation Okay, as you can see, this is um, where Kansas City, St. Louis, Memphis, okay, Toledo, Buffalo, so up to the Canada, no? Canada area, Montreal, Albany, Buffalo, Toronto. So uh, about in the east, northeast United States and the south. Canada border. So, okay, we have the red lines, the uh, what intermodal network terminals, and uh, the uh, yellow yellow circle are the uh, terminals. So we have a big terminal on what. On Chicago, 
Chicago is a big city, so expected to have a big terminal for railway transport and also in what Atlanta, Georgia, uh, Charlotte, Prince Born. So another is in what big this is what Pittsburgh. Okay. So in uh, somewhere in uh, Pennsylvania area or something like that. I don't uh, really uh, know the geography of uh, Eastern United States, but uh, there, there uh, are the uh, what? legions and markings on the map. So Georgetown, so this is uh, Columbus, Ohio, okay. so Cleveland, Ohio. So there are several trains station so there are uh, current uh, routes and secondary routes current single stack routes and so on so there is a heavy block uh, line which uh, says port heartland high speed double stack corridor so high speed so these are mm, railway transport for longer destinations uh, long destination because, for example, Chicago from uh, maybe from New York, okay. So, so here, maybe from part of uh, New York or lower than New York, so going to what to uh, Chicago, okay. So, that is what Port Heartland High Speed Double Stop Corridor. Excuse. Hmm. Genset and hybrid switchers. So this is an increasing uh, trend towards uh, electrical energy use. Okay? So hybrid switchers because the but generator sets ultra low emission diesel hybrid okay? switching locomotives. So it's still uh, diesel, but it is now hybrid. Okay. So less and less to dependence on oil. However, uh, because of the increase, there are millions and millions of cars, new cars per year, or even per, uh, per month. Millions and millions of new cars per month around the world. Okay, in the last twenty years, vehicle travel increased uh, seventy-eight uh, percent. Road miles increased only. <laughs> Road miles increased only one percent. So there is too much discrepancy. Okay, the number of roads being added to the. Uh, so the amount of road networks is 1%. Okay? And the amount of vehicles added to the number of cars already there, 70. So almost, almost doubles no? in the last uh, 20 years. No? What can you say? Traffic congestion cost the United States $67 billion annually due to traffic congestion meaning the waste of time waiting for this uh, flow of traffic, heavy traffic. Okay. Intermodal definition, intermodal shipment, the right shipment that moves between origin and destination using two or more modes of transportation. That's what we mean by intermodal. Mode of transport, Okay, there are two things, mode of transport, two types of intermodalism, modalism, bulk and unitized. Okay, so bulk, so more on up to the goods uh, movement. So growth of unitized intermodal segments has been a spectacular trend in transportation. 
domestic and international standardized designs for containers. So the process is becoming more and more efficient okay, in shipping these what, containers, moving uh, goods from point to point, okay, unitized. So, uh, for example, intermodal freight uh, trailers, longer and longer trailers, and the uh, trailers are what being what put into rails, <laughs> containers, <laughs> trailers are put into the rails, okay, and the uh, ship and containers. So these are example of intermodal meaning from one mode of transport to another. For, for example, uh, from country to country, it will go to through land, to highways, rails, ship, and uh, back to land and uh, going to the final destination. Transportation by more than one means conveyance as by truck, ship, and rail is called intermodal. That is the definition. Basic types of unitized intermodal equipment and service. So, railroad intermodal transportation is typically described as either trailer on flat car, TOFC, trailer on flat car. So, as you can see, um, flat car meaning flat train car. Okay, flat train car. It is uh, using railway system, but the trailer is loaded wholly over the flat car okay that is why why in order to minimize what to minimize uh, what uh, to minimize the airport to minimize the process of uh, putting it on and up okay if you only put the container on the train and then at the destination side you will put again in the trailer it uh, means more airport because there are uh, what hundreds and hundreds of containers okay hundreds and hundreds of containers why why uh, put all of the trailer into the into the flat train flat car and then there is no movement physically of what of the container of the goods inside the container will not move the goods in and out of the container okay so from the starting point of uh, the goods being put inside the container, it is on the same container up to the point of destination. That is uh, what we mean by uh, that intermodalism that is unitized. Okay, container on flat car. So, which one is uh, better, container on flat car or uh, trailer on flat car? So, trailer on flat car is the upper picture container on flat car is on the lower picture okay so here you will still need what crane we still need heavy equipment to to move the container in and out of the flat car and put it into the trailer while here you just have to to dump this uh, wheel trailer uh, bodies and attach it to the head of the trailer and uh, deliver it. Okay? <clears throat> so that is the difference. Although the uh, early rail cars used to transport this uh, were uh, flat cars, intermodal rolling stock has become highly specialized. So flat car, rolling stock, okay? Flat cars, very, almost only the base. Only the base of the train car, that we call flat car, only the base. So this is a purely what for uh, goods uh, transport. Also, road uh, railer 
is a system in which a container can uh, ride directly on either highway or railroad wheel assembly without any car at all. Okay, road trailer. Okay, container can ride directly on either highway or railroad wheel assembly <laughs> without any car at all. So it is it is just being attached. Look. Okay, road railer. So, what? There is a mechanism under these, these uh, containers wherein you can attach a railway wheel. Okay, railway wheel. And at the end of the railway, you can detach it or you can what disengage you can disengage it and engage the the what the air air uh, pressure tire no? so air uh, tire okay so you are now going to use the the uh, container for road so this is uh, an innovation an innovation a very good innovation wherein it seems like it is amphibian, no? Amphib amphibious uh, vehicles can uh, manage to travel by uh, land and water, while this one, it can manage to uh, travel in a highway or in a railway easily. So there is a mechanism that uh, is already attached or can be attached attached or detached or it's always attached but can be engaged or disengaged at any time uh, they want it so if uh, it is the end of the rail uh, network so they will uh, use the highway i don't uh, see the must the advantage of it but the only advantage is that railway system is always the priority in a traffic uh, cross section. For example, there's a traffic between the highway and the railroad. <laughs> railway system is the priority. Those cars will stop on the train crossing, okay? the railway crossing. They will stop. Okay? So always a priority. So traffic uh, is the uh, number one is the I think the only one reason why this is uh, happening this type this uh, road trail road trailer system works for example uh, in the uh, congested area near city centers they are the priority to go around while if they are using the highway they will uh, suffer to the uh, hours and hours of heavy traffic. Summary, the poor uh, rail industry is growing. Rail has become a viable alternative to drop spike in public interest due to highway congestion, population growth, just uh, like we have always been mentioning, environmental issues, fuel conservation. So if you compare, uh, we have in the previous uh, what, uh, slides, three times environmental friendly is the rail system because it can what it can move a one ton uh, load, right? Three times more or three times better than the truck. Okay, so it is a what more uh, environmental friendly, but it's not. Uh, 100% non-carbon user, so it will also have, have what? carbon footprint. Fuel conservation and uh, what uh, significant investment required to accommodate growth for private and passenger has been in place already. There are uh, too much uh, news, too much uh, information, too much acceptance by the public. Okay, so. This is the current situation 
developer and uh, uh, our railway uh, system will work and therefore railway engineering will become one of the areas of uh, modes of transportation you have to look into in our uh, study. Okay, thank you for uh, listening. This is uh, the end of this uh, second video on this topic and uh, we'll be back uh, we'll see you next video again. This is Dr. AP, Preaching Engineering Coordination Building.